This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We start today with news from Acura, which just unveiled its first all-electric model, the Acura ZDX, and its S badge variant, the Acura ZDS Type S, at the Monterey Car Week in the US. And while it's not clear if it's coming to Aotearoa, we think it's still worth sharing. Built on the Ultium platform that underpins all of GM's new electric models, the ZDX will come in several different configurations, ranging from a single motor 250 kilowatt model with a target range of 325 miles, 323 kilometers, through to a 367 kilowatt all-wheel drive Type S with a much more sportier driving dynamic and obviously a shorter range that's targeting an EPA range of 288 miles or 463 kilometers. It will go on sale from 60,000 US dollars next year. This week, battery supplier Contemporary Amperex Technology Co., or Cattle for short, unveiled its latest battery breakthrough in the form of the Shen Qing battery. Revealed during its 2023 new products launch event, Shen Qing, which apparently stands for Godlike Movement, is the company claims the world's first LFP battery pack capable of charging at up to 4C. This means it can add 400 kilometers, 248 miles of range in a claimed 10 minutes. At a suitably high power charging station with claimed low temperature performance that is good and a claimed pack range in excess of 700 kilometers 434 miles in an average application it will enter into production later this year it has an aim to begin shipping to automotive customers early next Although recent surveys suggest that electric vehicles are no longer exclusively the preserve of those with more liberal political views, a new Pew Research study shows political bias still plays a large part. Its latest survey suggests that there's a widening gap between views on climate change and cleaner vehicles between the two main US political parties. While 48% of registered Democrats said that they were in favour of phasing out fossil fuels, only only 12% of Republicans agreed. In a similar vein, 78% of Democrats viewed climate change as a major threat, but only 23% of Republicans felt the same way. Worse still, only 34% of all respondents said climate change should be a top priority for politicians. PepsiCo, which currently operates one of the largest Tesla semi-delivery fleets in the world, has let slip some interesting details about how it uses its fleet. In a new interview with the NACFE, that's the North American Council for Freight Efficiency, PepsiCo representatives detailed some of their real-world experiences operating their fleet of 21 Tesla semis and of a bottling plant in Sacramento, California. With four 750-kilowatt mega charges installed at the depot, the company reports using its fleet for short-range deliveries in a 100-mile, 160 kilometer radius of the depot, and sees fuel efficiency of around 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile. That's 1.1 kilowatt hours per kilometer. Following the official reveal of the Fisker Alaska pickup last week, the company has been confirming some more details about the truck, which it's now taking deposits for. In a press release, it's confirmed the Fisker Alaska, which will start from $45,400 US dollars, will be offered with a choice of 75 or 113 kilowatt hour battery packs, with target ranges per charge of between 230 and 340 miles. That's 370 to 547 kilometers. Like the Chevrolet Silverado EV, the Alaska will feature an expandable load bay made possible by a movable rear cab partition that will drop down to give up to 9.2 feet, that's 2.8 meters of load bay length. 
Ever since Faraday Future burst onto the scene in 2016, we've watched as the company struggled to bring vehicles to production. But this week, a full five years after it promised its FF91 would begin production, the very first FF91 was delivered to a paying customer. But rather than be an individual, it was delivered to a representative of Private Collection Motors Inc. It's an exotic and luxury car specialist in Costa Mesa, California. The delivered vehicle, which was in the top spec 2.0 Futurist Alliance Launch Edition trim, boasts a 152 kilowatt hour battery pack, an EPA estimated 381 miles, 613 kilometers of range, and a price tag of over 309,000 US dollars. Meanwhile, Tesla, whose Model S and Model X have slowly increased in price over the last few years, has just launched new standard range versions of each. Officially launched earlier this week, the new standard range Model S is a full $10,000 cheaper than the long range Model S, with a starting price of $78,490. US The standard range Model X gets a similar $10,000 price cut off the long range model, with a starting Starting price of eighty-eight thousand four hundred and ninety U.S. dollars. Available in markets, of course, where only left-hand drive cars are legal. Both cars are built with the same components as their longer-legged siblings, with software-limited battery packs offering three hundred and twenty and two hundred and sixty-nine miles, five fourteen and four thirty-two kilometers, respectively. As promised, EV startup VinFast made its public debut on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange this week after completing a reverse merger with a special purpose acquisition company. At first, the company's stock price soared, catapulting it from an initial price of $22 per share to more than $37 per share. This gave the company a momentary market cap of $86 billion, US dollars, more than Ford, GM or Stellantis. But almost as quickly as its stock price soared, the share price fell, with the share price at the time of recording this on Thursday a little bit below its listing price. That said, that listing price is still more than double the amount that Black Spade acquisition paid per share when the reverse merger took place. So while we are not financial experts, I think it's pretty clear that someone somewhere made a quick buck. If you're eagerly awaiting the launch of the Tesla Cybertruck, which statistically speaking, plenty of you are, we've seen some interesting snippets of news this week on its production. First, a Tesla Cybertruck release candidate was spotted broken down at the side of the road in California, leading to some interesting social media posts. But hang on, it's important to note that the truck in question was being tested and that test vehicles sometimes do break down because they're being tested before they launch. The second piece of news is that Tesla now appears to be churning out significant numbers of production intent vehicles to go through crash testing, and some vehicles with crash test markings have been spotted in the wild. Finally, a video has popped up online showing the Cybertruck's all-wheel steering in a very impressive turn. Sadly, we don't have permission to share it here, which is why we've been using the footage we have. Before we get to those final two stories, a question. Are you in the market for a new EV? If you are and you live in Athara, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can use, and of course, how to get charging at home. So follow the link below and start that journey today. As I discovered when I went to India a few years back, tuk-tuks, aka auto rickshaws, or more simply autos, are a very popular way of getting people and things around busy congested cities. My visit there was as a guest of Mahindra, where I got to see all electric auto rickshaws being built in Bengaluru. And now Mahindra has just launched a new version of its battery electric auto rickshaw called the E-Alpha Super. With an improved battery pack, it offers 20% range improvement of more than 95 kilometers, 60 miles per charge, as well as a more powerful onboard charger. And interestingly, the E-Alpha Super keeps its price low by offering a lead acid battery pack, which means its on-the-road price starts from just 1.61 lakh rupee, or about 2,000 US dollars. 
To make this transition to a cleaner, greener future, we need all price points for EVs and all types of vehicle. And finally, electric bicycles are a great way of getting into EV ownership. Cheaper than a car and more versatile, they also offer great health benefits over other forms of transport. But a lobbying group that represents the bicycle industry is pushing US legislators hard to ensure that e-bikes are kept out of right to repair legislation. They're citing recent battery fires in New York as the reason why consumers shouldn't be given tools and knowledge that they need to repair their own electric bicycles on their own time. Aside from being truly disingenuous, the e-bike fires are for the most part caused by poor quality battery packs flooding the market from overseas, this particular stance by the bicycle industry is frankly horrendous. Working on and fixing electric bicycles is a fantastic way to learn EV fundamentals and it can help ensure that we keep landfill waste to an absolute minimum, so it's a hard dislike from us. And on that note, we're done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't yet, it's time to switch to Atero's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch. And if you do, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as usual. And in the meantime, don't forget to check out the latest videos from Gavin Evie Shoebridge on this very channel. He has been doing some amazing videos of late, so make sure that you subscribe and follow the links to find out more. Whatever you watch next, I hope you have a good day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.